Hey guys, welcome back to Dislight. In today's video, I wanted to do a video covering some of the big mistakes that I see people making um, and things that you can sort of avoid to help your progression because some of these things uh, can really slow down the progression in the game. So the first one I want to mention is I see all the time in like the general chat, people posting, you know, link links to their, their builds of their characters, something like this. Uh, but sometimes you can actually see the relics if they've built them. So you see a bunch of that and what I see very often is relics being upgraded way more than they need to be and costing people a lot of gold. So my general rule of thumb, now this, this is a flexible rule, it's not a hard and fast rule, but the general thing that I look at is if you've got three star relics, which are the blue ones, I don't really upgrade them past six. Uh, if you've got purple relics, which are the four stars, I don't normally upgrade them. I don't even think I have a set on anyone at the moment. I've gone past that, but I generally don't upgrade the four star purple relics past level nine. Here's one for example. Then with the yellows or the five stars, I normally leave those at 12. However, in, in early cases, like, you know, like this one is like the first one you get, uh, you know, it's, I know when I'm progressing, it's going to be a long time before I get a replacement for that, especially because it's a Hades set. I'll upgrade that one to 15. Like I said, there's some exceptions to every rule, but those ones I normally leave at 12. And then once we get to six star relics, I normally leave them at 12. Ignore this. This is a flat attack. I've been having really bad luck on the revenge set on crafting. Give me a break. But Normally with these ones, I still also like to leave them at 12. The reason for all of this is because of gold. The blues and purples, as you progress through the game, you will replace them very quickly and you don't want to waste too much gold upgrading them to 12 and 15 when they're going to be throw away pretty soon. So that's what I like to do. And then when we look at the, uh, the, the six star ones, the reason I leave them as 12 as well is because it can, co it can cost you more than a million gold to upgrade one of these from 12 to 15, which is a lot of gold. So I'm, I don't upgrade these to 15 until I get an absolutely godly one that I'm absolutely pumped about. Now, this was one that, for instance, that I got. This, I probably shouldn't have done this, but I get excited when I see high speed rolls. So I had this one at plus 12 with 12 speed, and I really wanted to see if I could get a final roll into speed. It cost me over a million gold, and it screwed me for upgrading the rest of my team's relics to plus 12 and it was a bad mistake but you know the addiction of trying to see if you could get that rng to get you know a 16 a tw eight uh, sorry a 16 speed substat it was too much for me so i had to do it but yeah that this really ruined me today i did this and i'm like why did i do that i'm such an idiot but i like to wait till i have godly godly relics before i go to 15 and if i do go to 15 on them it's it's always going to start with these three slots these three slots always have the flat stats this one always flat flat HP, flat defense, and flat attack. This one can get you like crit, ignore this one, but this one can get you like defense percent, HP percent, crit rate, crit damage. This one can get you uh, HP percent, you know, defense percent, attack percent, and this one can get you speed, which is really valuable. So these are the slots. If you're going to upgrade anything to 15, like it would be these three slots, not the top three. They can sit at 12 for a very long time. And on that topic of wasting gold, something else that I really want to recommend to people is holding a reserve of, at the moment, I want to keep like 500,000. You can see I'm at 240,000, but keeping a good reserve of gold because you don't want to use all your gold, then go into the shop and then find something amazing in the shop. Now, the, the things that I buy from the shop are typically typically stamina. If I ever see stamina in the shop, I think it costs 150,000 gold or something like that. Maybe it's less, 100,000. Um, I'm always buying it because stamina is the hardest thing to get in the game. Um, so I will always buy that. If I see uh, rare Abilimons at this stage, I am still buying those. And the only other thing that I would actually buy in here is if I saw like an overpowered godly relic. Uh, for instance, like, you know, if I had a crit damage set one here that had crit damage as the main stat and then speed attack percent crit rate crit damage as the substats I, i'd go for something like that uh, but it would have to be like overpoweredly godly for me to pick it up from the store the only other exception to that is when you're like early on in the game and you can't farm like you know the higher stages of the dungeons maybe if you saw a really good six star but it's still i think it'd be too expensive in gold unless it is an overpowered godly like absolutely godly relic the next thing I want to talk about is the resonance because a lot of people, if you've come from something like, um, 
Summoner's War or Epic 7. I don't know how those games, if they've evolved past this uh, recently. But if you come from some of those games, uh, we'll go with her, for instance. Um, normally with these those games, I know in Summoner's War, their skill ups come from feeding dupes of the character, but then you only want to feed the dupes for um, starring up your characters. In this game, it's different. You never want to feed the dupes to star up the character. What you want to do is feed the dupes into the resonance, and you can do this instantly. Don't worry about wasting the food, because for instance here, if I feed two of her into the resonance, and I go like that, happy days, it is actually going to give me two fodder units that I can then replace that with. So as soon as you get those, use them and don't feed units for the starring up. Just feed them straight into resonance if they're dupes and then you get the food anyway. So if I had a four star dupe, it would give me four star starrymons. If it was a five star dupe, it would give me five star starrymons. It's a really good system compared to the things that I used to use in Summoner's War and stuff like that. So definitely keep that in mind because it can throw some people out. And while we're talking about that sort of stuff, uh, just a quick one here I wanted to go to in the War Room. Uh, when we look at Esper Fusions, I mentioned this in my Fusion video, but for instance, we need here to have Ascension Phase 4 Bernie. Now, Ascension Phase 4 is the Ascension Phase which you can reach at level 30. So all you need is a 3-star level 30 to get Ascension 4. Uh, for instance, if I look at here uh, and I go to her and I go Growth and I go Ascension, this is the Ascension level. So 3-star, this one says it requires level 30. Level uh, 3 stars can get to level 30, so you can go ahead and do that. Don't get caught out making like the units 4 star for the fusion when they only need to be 3 star. Then the Gabriel fusion, you only need them to be 4 star to reach level 40 and get to this ascension level. So that's just something that caught me out at the very start when I looked at it. So avoid it, especially if you come from those other games and that's what you're used to. The next mistake I want to look at is not at, like just filling out your friends list and refreshing it every day. So especially if you have not obtained uh, Yeshua and let's just go show because people might be new and not have seen them. But if you have not obtained through the Ripple Dungeons, Yeshua, which is this one, and I still haven't done her, um, and also Dahlia, what you want to do is you want to get yourself into an active guild because or club because the clubs, feel free to join OFA. It's open invite. Fill it up. I think we've still got space. Um, but yeah, because what happens is you want to be proccing Ripple Dungeons. Now, Ripple Dungeons occur down here in the bottom left here. And what happens is when these proc, you, you, uh, I missed one. No, I, mi I missed it. My friend got it. I actually need two more of her. Damn, I wasn't looking. So what you want to do is you want to fill up your friends list as well. So this is the other tip. Um, let's go into my friends list and I'll show you and then I'll talk about how the Ripple Dungeons work. So if we go here and we go to friends, what I like to do is when I'm searching for these Ripple Dungeons, uh, you can see if I go to, where's my, it's just my friends list. Here, what I'd normally do when I log in, you can see my friends list is pretty active. Then I've got offline people. I would be booting every one of these offline people and then going into the general chat of the game and saying, I'm farming for Ripple Dungeons, add me if you are too. You will get a full list of people inviting you, like adding you. If you do that in 10 channels, you'll have like go from channel one through 10, you'll get a full list of people wanting to invite you because everyone's always farming them. Um, and then if your friends or guildmates proc a Ripple, it won't show up in chat. So you've got to check back here like every five to 10 minutes and go in there and see if you've got one. Um, it's a really frustrating thing, but you want to keep your friends list full and active and in an active club. So you got the most chance of getting those because what happens is when you proc those things and you get into them, um, it's limited numbers, but for the first 15 minutes of a friend or a guildmate, you can see it and it doesn't get posted to the general chat. Um, and as you can see here, you get uh, eight shards per run for Dahlia and you get five shards per run of Yeshua. So you need to get into six Yeshua ones and you need to get into five Dahlia ones. I've been really unlucky. I've already got Dahlia summoned and I've almost got a second copy of her. I just can't find the Yeshua ones. But these two cannot be summoned. They're both very good free-to-play units and you really want to keep your lists active for that reason. The next one that I want to look at is, is a harder one. It's not sort of a hard and fast rule again, but it's like farming something when there's something else that you can progress in. For instance, farming, say, stage four of a Kronos dungeon when you haven't progressed through campaign. Because often, you know, if you can if you can still progress campaign, you might get more levels into characters and then be able to 
push further in the dungeons and stuff like that. It works, it works across everything, but just the general rule of thumb is before you start auto farming something, unless of course you're farming level 10 of the relic dungeons, then it doesn't matter. But when you're trying to progress through the game, before you start auto farming anything, whether it be experience, relics, um, you know, the, the Sonic Miracles, anything like that, check if there is anything else that you can do that will help your progression. For instance, before you even start farming anything, see if you can push the infinite miracle further. You might get something, you might get a summon, get a new character. You might get anything that can help you. You get like, um, maybe you can craft a new relic that helps you. There's a lot of different stuff. Check the cube miracle. Make sure you do that every day. Before you start farming anything on auto, check the other things because if you can progress and then instead of farming say level seven of a relic dungeon you can then farm level eight it's going to give you much greater six star relic drops and that's going to help you out same with sonic miracle you don't want to farm level six if you can do something else help your account and then maybe after you come back you can farm level seven so not a hard and fast rule but just before you click auto on anything to try and optimize your stamina usage check if there's anything else that you can progress in is what I like to do. And the next thing that I wanted to look at, this is this is a very min-maxi one, but I, I have fun in arena. Um, but if you want to push arena, because we do have missions and you want to get those missions done. Uh, and one of them is the arena one, which your rank in arena or your tier, which is this one, you can see I'm in five, um, you know, is, is a requirement for it. Now, as you can see here, you can't see because I've got the challenge symbol there, but he's going to give me 15 plus three points. Now, the arena points that I use in the shop, it's only going to give me plus 10 but my actual ranking points it's going to give me 18 points for beating him these two will give me 13 and these ones will give me zero so to get those rankings up what i want to do is challenge the hardest enemy and then hit refresh now this refresh as this blue thing goes around that's the timer so in the time it takes me to challenge this enemy that should be refreshed so this is my team that i'm using my drew doesn't actually have gear on him at the moment so i will throw Anki chai this is going to be really bad because I, I've, I've swapped relics around to test some stuff out. <laughs> So this could be a hard fail. But what you want to do is you want to defeat that top enemy if you can. If you can't defeat the top enemy, if they look like they're too strong, refresh. And then if that gets too tedious for you, go to the second two. Don't just attack the bottom one because we do have those missions that you're going to require you to do these things. So wanna, let's just armor break here and then let's just see if we can cleave. Let's get the cooldown reductions on those. Let's get this happening. Steal some. Yeah, no, we're going to be screwed here. Uh, can I put you, who's their first one to move? Wukong? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I should have, um, I should have very my Drew before I went into this because I'm now going to lose horribly. Let's, let's see if we can freeze you. Okay. You got you dead. All right. Let's, let's get some defense up. Oh, we might be fine here. We might be fine. Okay. Okay. It's okay. But yeah, this is what you want to do. Obviously, you want to have a bit of a better team. Now, if you if you start facing, like I will get to a stage, like if I get to like rank 10, I won't be able to beat anyone. I don't have the relics to do that. I'm, I'm almost farming 10 at this stage uh, on the relic dungeon. But, you know, you, there's a certain place, but try and optimize it, especially early on um, when you're brand new. The other thing you want to look for is have a fast turn gauge booster. You can do cleave really early on in the lower ranks because no one has, you know, good teams. Um, so for instance, you want something like this. So for me, I've got Dahlia who increases my team's turn gauge. So I've got her on a wind walker set with a speed relic to go fast. Then you want someone that maybe has a defense break or AOE damage. You can just bring a bunch of AOE damage. And if you're struggling because everyone's outpacing you in arena, you can see here that I've got the level one gobble gobble dude. I don't know his name. I can never remember, but he does have a speed leader in point war by 20%, which can really help you get the first turn. Now, when you get later game, it's not going to be about who's fastest wins, but when you're in like the top, the bottom five sort of tiers, normally if you go first, you win. So he really helps out in that sense as well. But that is pretty much it for the, another mistake that I forgot to mention earlier that I make all the time is not checking the shop. Check the shop. Every six hours, it refreshes. Now, this isn't like a fixed to the clock thing. This is six hours after it refreshes. So make sure you're always checking the shop. See if you can get some of the goodies. On top of that, always do your bounties. Don't forget, don't leave your tickets for the bounties. Um, but also on these, you do get a free refresh. You can see when that comes. Um, and always use your free refresh to see if you can get something better. You can see I use some refreshes here. Managed to pick up this one, which gave me 200 gems, which is a really nice 
nice one to get. Those don't drop too often, but it's nice to get. The other thing is I always like looking for stamina on these because stamina is the only thing in the game that you can't get a stack of, you can't farm for. So, you know, I like to get as much stamina as I can. But anyway, guys, that's the tips. Hopefully everyone is progressing nicely. Um, if there's anything else that you guys can think of, feel free to leave it in the comments and have a look. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.